come to you and we want you to deposit in our hearts uh, what you say we are, who you say we are, what we possess, and um, how we are to walk with you as uh, heirs with you, Jesus. And so today, I ask that you just um, deposit your revelation in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to read real quick a couple passages from James. <clears throat> And so James, the book of James is actually to the Jewish believers, to all the tribes. You can see that at the beginning of the book. Um, and so I'll just go ahead and start in um, verse 2. James chapter 1, verse 2. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that your faith is test- when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Um, just to pause, there is a, a brother Hagen <clears throat> was talking about how he would go on trips and his kids, you know, would have fevers or whatever. So he'd come home and he would he would pray. One time, though, uh, his wife was like, oh. This little one has a fever, and he just had walked in and everything, and he starts dancing. He's like, praise God. He starts having joy in the house, and she's like, what's going on? And he was like, I am so grateful that I get to see the healer come into our house today. I am so grateful that, that with these trials, I get to see God move on our behalf. So he starts having this praise party and praise, and the kid obviously gets healed. But uh, this is the scripture that <laughs> it reminds me of. So if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Don't waver. For a person divided with a divided loyalty is as unsettled as the waves of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in all they do. So one thing we are is not a divided people. We are a single-minded people. Oh, Jeff, come on. The man's in the house today. I told him um, I was just going to put on the Jeff hat because I kept seeing him. (laughs) Oh, it was cute. Uh, I kept seeing him like (laughs) declaring the things that we are and I kept seeing him do it and reading it. You know how he does his little thing and he's like, I said, (laughs) he gets his preach on. So I told him, I'll just try to be, like, put my hat on and just do it like I see him doing (laughs) it. You were doing a great job. You don't need me, you know. So anyway, we are a one-minded people. Amen. We have faith in this, in our one true God. This is who we are. And because of that, we don't have to be unstable and tossed I do love how Peter uh, called to the Lord on the boat when there's like everything. He sees the Lord and he says, hey, if it's you, will you call me out? Will you call me to come? And I feel like the Lord has uh, shown me a few times. I'll get the story a little off. Like for Moses, I thought that he was being called and he turned and he came to the burning bush. But the bush was burning and he turned. And for Peter, I thought that he, was, being, he called, was called out, and that's why he came. But he is the one who said, Lord, I see you. I'm looking, and I see the one. <laughs> no one else is like, Jesus, are you out there on the waters? He saw him, and he said, can I come? And, uh, and the Lord called him out. And he was able to stand with his one mind, saying, will you call me out? And he got to walk on the water because of it. Now, obviously, the second part, it's easy to be up there, and you're like, wait a second, wait a second, what did I just do? (laughs) Wait, am I doing something that is very impossible for me? (laughs) Should I have done it? But then the Lord grabs and says, hey, stand in faith with me. I'm the one. It's not the waves that you're looking at. It's me. So let's keep looking at the one. You have something to add? Well, I was just thinking that, you know, speaking about faith today and not being double-minded, you know, one way you could look at that is, is double-minded is sometimes the backup plan. Mm. 
Okay, the plan B, you know, like, well, if God doesn't come through, luckily I got all this padding around me and I got these other things. And that's kind of one of the signs that, that you've let doubt slip in there is because you got all your backup plans to protect yourself. Okay, and so we, sometimes we got to lose the backup. We, we just got to say, okay, God, my, my plan is you and you. Amen. I only have a plan A. I only have serving you. I only have all out for you all out for your calling, all out for what you're doing. Because a lot of times we, got the, we have the self-protection yes, plan in true. the background. Like, this is what I'm going to do if God doesn't come through. Wow. Well, why are we even planning that? You know, and then, honestly, if sometimes we, we step out and, you know, there's faith and then there's presumption. Okay, presumption is you just, you just made it up, you know. But God's so good. If we're trying to honor him and we're trying to step out in faith... And maybe we kind of got it half right. You know, he's such a good father. He'll come through and carry us the rest of the way. He'll come through That's right. and do, you know, whenever you miss your exit and it starts saying recalculating, recalculating. We got any daydreamers in here who miss exits like me? Okay, thank you. You know what? There's mercy. Okay, we have the recalculate. So we don't need to have you the self-protection plan and the plan B and the, and the what if this, you know, thing. we need to just go all out for God, all out for his plans for our lives. Come on, can I get an amen in here? I'm doing, now I'm doing what Liz said I was going to do. Come on, we're going all out for him. We got one plan. It's all out. It's all out for him. It's full send for Jesus. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. Come on. And then, you know what? And if, and if we don't, and if we mess up going all out for God, there's grace and there's mercy and he'll recalculate. And so the backup plan is also him. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yes. The backup plan is him saving us. The backup plan is him catching us and dusting us off. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Now come on. Yes. The backup plan isn't our muscles. Okay. Well, God didn't do it. So I have to. Uh, it's actually in our weakness. He's made strong when we go back to him. I love if you are charting through the Bible, if you read through Israel's uh, journey. You could see over and over and over when things happen and the difference that occurs when Israel goes back to the Lord and says, okay, wait, 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 Was I, what are we supposed to do now? What's the next step? Okay, so, the, so this, uh, this group just defeated part of our men. Are we, con are we to continue? How are we to continue? Should we pause? And every time they went to the Lord, the Lord always moved on their behalf. And honestly, anytime they just, uh, in presumption, something came their way and they just went ahead, it wasn't, it didn't turn out well. And it's so funny because we, we get to read the story and we know the end of it. <laughs> we know what God does every single time because we're, we know the end. Yes. But we have to keep this in mind in our every single day life when we're going and something comes our way, it's so easy to react. Like react to whatever's happening. Instead of going to him and allowing him to move us. And so our steps being ordered of him, not just as a response to whatever's occurring. Because there were often upside down things that the Lord told people to do. Upside down. I mean, I, I love how... Uh, he would tell people, okay, so you need to, this way you went from the front. Next time, I want you to sneak around back. <laughs> I mean, next time I want you to hide in the trees. I want you to hold lamps under pots. I want you to smash the pots. They're going to think there's a million of you when there's only a thousand. He is the one who knows, and we always have to go back to leaning on him. And obviously, there is so much grace. Obviously, we do things um, on our own accord to enough in our own life. But when you find yourself doing it, when you find yourself walking on your own, when you find yourself having used your own muscle, or you Come realize, on. wow, my muscle is kind of weak right now. I don't think I can do this. I feel uh, weary. I feel like I, I don't have it in me. This is, just let that be a reminder. Oh, I'm to go to him. I'm to look at him. This is what my role is to be right now. I've been walking. I've been using my own muscle. I want to come to you quicker every time. Another thing we could say is that I think is really good is that people teach, and I know you all have heard, but I want to say it again today, is that, is that faith begins where the will of God is known. Okay, so faith begins where the will of God is known. So obviously, 
we, we have the will of God in a broad and beautiful sense in the scripture. But then there is a personal faith is what I'll call it for today for you guys, each of your lives in here. And when and God is going to speak to you. How many of y'all heard God spoke to you? Mm-hmm. Amen. Or has, has given you direction before, you know, like, for example, go to the internship. Okay, so as soon as God tells you, go to the internship, faith comes. That's right. Well, but God, what about work? Well, God, what about this plan? Well, God, what about this? All of a sudden, you know, it's like faith. Faith comes and you can start to move supernaturally and say, you know what? You know, I know one of our gentlemen on the camera right now. Record us. You know, faith comes and then all of a sudden business ideas comes. Open opportunities come. Blessings start to flow. Favor, I know other interns favor with their job. They just, I mean, they're like letting them take all kinds of time off and do missions trips and do all kinds of, they just don't, it's just favor. And then, you know, friendships come, blessings come. It just, but it starts with faith. It starts with knowing him. And so what I really encourage you is if there's an area in your life where you're like, okay, there's, there's worry or, oh, okay, there's, there's doubt here. Get alone with God. Amen. Start to pray and, and ask him, Lord, speak to me. Amen. I want to hear you. And he might speak to you just through his spirit in you, to your spirit. So that might just come in here. Or he might speak to you through the scriptures when you're reading the scriptures. It might just be through peace or whatever. But he's going to speak to you. And then from there, you'll know. So he'll say, don't worry. Or he'll say, go left. He'll say, go right. And so that's something that we've uh, kind of always practiced, Elizabeth and I. Mm-hmm is praying and then kind of learning the art of putting your heart in neutral. Okay, because sometimes we go to God and we go to God with prayer, but we don't actually come with our hearts in neutral. Truth. Okay, we come to God with like a lot of agenda and yeah, like, we'll like, God, this is what I want you to do. We're like, Lord, what so, is it you want me to do? Should I stay in this relationship? La, 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 la. <laughs> I mean, God, you really can listen. tell me if you want la, to. La, 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 la. <laughs> Should I quit my job? La, 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 la. If you just want me to get out, all you've got to do is say it. La, la, la. <laughs> okay, that's really good. Ooh, I okay. used to do that. Or you're like, God, like, I want to do this, so just tell me which way to do this thing. And he's like, you see, you're, you're forcing it this direction. And so one of the things that we've learned is that we, we'll pray and we'll say, God, we're, we're with this situation or this, you know, trial or whatever it is, or, or just this desire, Lord, we put our hearts in neutral. Mm-hmm. And Lord, we ask you to flip us back into gear. Mm-hmm. Wow. Speak to us and, and give us direction. Speak to us. And so sometimes if you're hitting a wall, you got to put your heart in neutral. Yes. And you got to invite the Lord to speak. And then when he speaks to you, you'll have faith. Yes. And you'll be able to do it. You know, and this is, this is, from a big decision like career or right. marriage to a small decision like, how many of y'all heard the bag story in here? Have you heard the bag story? Okay, the faithfuls. Thank you, thank you. But not that y'all aren't faithful, you haven't heard it. But this was it's many moons story. ago, and just uh, imitation of me, I feel like it's I'm gonna a little I'm off. gonna imitate you accurately. Okay. But I will say what he is accounting is true. So. Maybe I just didn't say it the way he's going to act this like This is going to be it. so good. He kind of okay. makes me sound like a witch. John, have you heard this story before? No. Okay. This is a good Go one. Go ahead. This is good. So Elizabeth and I were dating, and someone had, I think it was my birthday or something, so somehow I had a little, a little cashola, okay? Mm-hmm. Y'all know what that is, a little bread, okay? A little birthday <laughs> seed, birthday seed money, okay? Yeah. And so, of course, I'm like, it's burning a hole in my pocket. I'm like, I got to spend it, you know? <laughs> And so, and so, so we go to the mall together, and Elizabeth, where, where were we in our relationship? Dating, engaged, That's something, dating, yeah. something, enough to where I felt persecuted by this. And so I go into the, the store, the fossil store, okay, and I'm looking at bags in the store. And I really got down to, Heather, I had two bags that I was trying to decide between, man bags at the time, you used to, everyone had the big was, messenger bags on the side. Yeah. It was before fannies came back and, you know, side bags and all this. So, um, that's probably, I don't even know what's in now, but so I'm looking at these bags and I'm trying to decide between this one, like kind of khaki colored 
bag and then a very bright orange bag, okay? And then I get caught up in my thoughts and I'm like caught up in my emotions of it. And I'm like, I don't know. And so I'm trying to, and so then Liz starts going, well, just choose one. Okay, we had been there for a really long time. Hey, hey. He's a shopper and I'm not. It's so true. I'm like, you know, the guys that sit at the dressing room and they're like falling asleep. I was doing that about his bags. <laughs> I was like, will you please choose a bag? He started putting them on, looking in the mirror one side, looking in the mirror on the other side. I'm like, just decide, choose a bag, okay? just do it. Can you just choose a bag? I was caught Come on. between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay? And so yeah. we say this because it's a very low risk story, obviously. So, so I tell Liz, I said, I finally tell her, we're newly dating, and I tell her, I can't decide which bag. I'm going to go and pray. And, and so then Liz ensues <laughs> to, and I was like, to you? laugh at me <laughs> with thrusted force. <laughs> no. You're going to pray over your bag? <laughs> do, you hear, do you think I talk like that? No, I'm like, People wait, 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 sure. you're going to pray over this. Can you just choose? It's not that hard. It's not a hard decision. So just decide the, on a bag so we could go. So I just want to tell you, like, I'm going to pray. I have been persecuted for prayer yeah, yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have been persecuted for my faith. Yes, want you yes, to know yes. that. By me. It was by, me. By people, I don't want to say who, but by people <laughs> dear to me, very dear to my relationship. We do this a lot now, just in everyday life. <laughs> and so even though I was laughed at, and I just chose to walk in love. And so I walk out of the store. and um, He sits on the bench. And I sit on the bench. And he prays. And I said, Lord, you know which bag I'm going to like more. You know me. You created me. You know me five years from now, Lord. You know me in the future. And so I, I seriously pray. As soon as I pray, the Lord says, Buy the khaki bag, that bright orange bag. You're going to feel goofy walking around with that big loud thing. And I was like, thank you, Lord. So I walk back in the store. I go get the bag. And that was, and then Liz caught a revelation that day. She learned about prayer. <laughs> I learned about prayer. She learned that God cares. <laughs> yep. And he from does. that moment forward, I never missed the bright orange bag. I knew. He still has his khaki bag. I still have the bag. It's very beat up now. It's been, years. It's been to a lot of places. Okay, so but we, it, just, it just shifted my heart, and I know that's a real funny little thing, but when, you can go to the Lord for, for the littlest thing yes. and learn to hear Him yes. and learn to speak to Him. And I would encourage you to do so because I think it, it puts and us in a little... And even if people persecute you. Yeah. <laughs> it puts us in a little <laughs> bit of a tough spot if you're just starting to try and listen to the Lord for a major decision only, and you haven't... Uh, started growing that muscle in your life. Or how about I say it like this? When you begin to grow this muscle of just leaning in for anything, honestly, for when you pick up the phone, I know sometimes that can sound silly yes. for people, but like relative A is calling. Lord, is this a moment I'm supposed to answer this? When you begin to do this in your every day, it becomes yes. so second nature um, big decisions are not hard at all because you have created a, a standing with the Lord. You've created a history knowing that he answers. He, he's not going to try to hide his voice. I do think people are like, I just can't hear him. I don't know if he's speaking. But if you begin to make this a part of your regular life, man, it becomes really easy. You, then your, your heart gets very sensitive to the slightest shifts. So, so we'll do this even with our kids, like, because they'll be sitting there looking at the two different dinosaurs. Which one am I going to get? Oh, no. You know, I know it's funny. We're yes, talking about I taught, shopping. I but... taught Emma. We went to um, Build-A-Bear. Yeah. And she couldn't decide. She was just freaking out. There's, I mean, there's so many dolls, so many options, guys. How are you supposed to make a decision? And so I said, okay, we're going to do something. You're going to learn way earlier than I learned. Let's go on a walk yeah. and let's pray. And it, it was so cute because instantly she knew after we prayed, she goes, oh, I know which bag, bear to get. It's the cinnamon bear. I knew it. And, <laughs> and it wasn't even the final two she was even thinking about. And then she walked in, bought it with faith. Yeah. We left. <laughs> it was beautiful. But it was kind of funny because now she remembers that moment. She's like, okay, if I get caught up and I don't know which decision to make, I can pray and I can roll it over on the Lord and ask him what to do. Yes, and then you begin to start understanding what peace feels like. Yes. 
I love how Pastor Andy. That's good, because when you're in faith, you have peace. <clears throat> yes, um, the Holy Spirit doesn't ever agree with, with lies or with untruth. The Holy Spirit only agrees with the Lord. So if you're not standing in truth with the Lord, you won't have peace. Um, and, but I love that this is a way you can begin to train yourself to understand what peace feels like. It's where you're not like wondering, you're not looking back and forth, you're not unsettled, and you're like, wow, I can do this really easily right now. Things get easy when you're in peace. And so, um, from A to Z, buying houses, cars, uh, going on trips, whatever it is, when you begin to bring it to the Lord, you don't have to be double-minded. That's right. The way to not be double-minded is to receive from the Lord a direction to stand in faith for. You get the arrow, and you're like, okay, I'm going steady. And when things start getting a little like, whoa, 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 you get to go back to him and say, okay, yes. so we've gotten the big arrow, so let's get a little more defined. Yes. So Stay it's a, tuned in. We're going a little more to the left here. We're doing a little pause. And, um, and it, you'll see this, even Paul was sent to Asia, and the Lord said, go. And he actually told him, don't, stop. You need to stop for a second. You're not supposed to go yet. Um, but he was being sent, and then there was a pullback. And so we just go with, with the breathing of the Lord. And we can't hear once and go. Because what will end up happening is you'll start then fighting your own battle. Because the Lord, uh, the Lord made it to, I mean, first of all, we deal with a lot of things, a lot of people, a lot of wills, a lot of changing uh, like, it's not only you, <laughs> yes. right? It's yes. all of us. It's the whole body. And, and so uh, we always, when we keep leaning on the Lord for little things, wow, we can live in so much more peace and so much more faith. I keep thinking about how, I was thinking about this the other day, um, when we had all nations, which was kind of like, I would say internship, but just, you know, pretty much the same thing. Um, we actually had, there were some beautiful moments, and this is what I love about what you guys have committed to, being here, because you have leaned in and you've heard him. You've heard him during dwells, you've heard him in classes, you've heard him in your quiet time, you've heard him in the scripture, and it's starting to uh, bring this foundation into your life that you get to bring everywhere for the rest of your life, till you're 100, 120, however old you get to be. But... Um, so in All Nations, we had, we had people, uh, one, the Lord would start giving pictures. Of, she was an ice skater. And the Lord would start giving her pictures of what he, he had for the ice skating industry. I'm not in the ice skating industry, and I don't think a thing about it until I'm like at Disney on ice or whatever. So um, the Lord would start giving her pictures just in time with him. And it started growing this design of what she started realizing. It started getting like more pinpoint of what the Lord wanted her to do. So she would take steps of faith. And I could probably say she maybe never would have even applied for Disney on Ice had the Lord not started showing her his design for that industry. He showed her all these things about his glory and on the ice and with the people. And so she ended up working for Disney on Ice for a very long time and doing, she was Princess Jasmine and she did all this kind of stuff. But it was as a result of hearing and seeing things from the Lord, spending time with him, leaning in and not just running. Because honestly, we can run after a dream, but it becomes very hollow. If she ran after, if that was her dream, I don't even, was that, I guess that maybe was her dream at the beginning. If she ran after the dream just for the sake of the dream, without the Lord, it gets to be really uh, shallow. And uh, where are you in this, Lord? Wait, I, I did something great. So what, what was, but the fact that she started getting his heart and his plan, man, it's so different than when she comes into uh, an audition with the Lord. Because the Lord has shown her things. And he can do that for everything with you guys, with us, with our life, with his body. And he wants to. And I love that this is beginning to be a culture and we don't have to be double-minded. And then we can go in with faith and confidently from the Lord. You don't need your own self-confidence. The Lord can give you 
confidence for yourself, but it really starts with God confidence. <laughs> so honestly, maybe don't even work on your self-confidence. Just start working on God confidence. And when you keep seeing him, you keep hearing him, you keep looking at him, things change. Amen. <laughs> no, I was just, no, I was just thinking about just practically speaking more tools that they could, mm -hmm. that they could apply for walking by faith. And I thought um, one of them is when you're on the, a mission trip soon, which is we're going to be on, uh, very practically speaking, just asking the Lord, Lord, highlight people for me to minister to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just that simple phrase, because it says here, ask, okay? So faith that is just kind of sitting, uh, it, it's, it needs to get activated by asking. So part of your faith walk is literally asking the Lord. He wants you to pray over and over in the scriptures. Ask, ask, ask. So he's going to want you. Yeah, so just literally what, start kind of like you start to pray, start to spend time with the Lord, and then you start to ask him. Lord, highlight people for me to minister to. Another way you could say is, Lord, Lord, open doors for ministry for me. Lord, open doors so I can love on people. Open hearts so they can receive you. Lord, Lord, highlight people for me to encourage. You know, I, I mean, we could start, we could start today. Actually, yeah. maybe we should end that way. What, what do you think? That'd be fun. So we'll end with encouraging. But, you know, just having that heart of like, Lord, give me somebody to encourage. Give me a yes. word to encourage them with. And just asking him is a great way to get in the flow, you know? Yeah. And, and who do you and, want to love today? Yeah. Who do you see today? Who is the one that is yes. on your heart? Who is on your mind today? You'll start seeing them when they walk in. You're like, oh, yes, God cares about this person so much right now. And just being faithful to if the Lord shows you somebody to love on them and to encourage them and offer them prayer or whatever it is that, that God, you know, kind of puts in your heart. I mean, that's being faithful. Yes. And, and, then, and then also, that's practicing not being double-minded. If he shows you the picture, do it. Yes. Amen? And, and then I would encourage you, another, like just, I just popped up in my spirit, so I was going to say it. But one of the fun things that I like to do, and this is like, again, this is stories. A lot of, these are stories. Take them or leave them. Modify them. It's okay. But I like to go on faith walks with God. So, very low risk. Very good for prayer. And... Uh, doesn't really matter if you mess up is I like to go on walks with God and I literally don't know where I'm going for fun and I'll start walking and then when I get to the end of the corner I will think in my heart Lord should I go left should I go straight or should I go right what should I do or which direction sometimes I'll feel like in general like I need to go that way and I love to do it now you're gonna have to get to tell Pastor Eric and Christina if you're in Bulgaria which is walking around the whole nation okay <laughs> maybe start at home. Maybe start first in Houston in a safe area before you do it overseas. I'm more of a licensed professional now at Faith Walks. So. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, seriously, if you'll just walk with God and you're talking to him and you're just talking about your day and you're loving on the Lord. And as you're walking, you're just like, Lord, where should I, where should I go? And you're practically trusting him with your steps as you're walking. Um, I mean, I, and I also faith drive. As well, by the way, that's patented, faith driving. So I drive without knowing where I'm going as well. Liz, Liz now learned just, <laughs> Liz now has learned just get in the truck. And, and before she always be like, where are we going? I'm like, I don't know. She's like, that does no what? <laughs> Most people go in their car with a plan. You know what I mean? They know where they're going. So anyways, again, another, <laughs> another thing you could you could grow into. Yes, I would be like, okay, just to like know to prepare, like what we're gonna do, you know? What do? I'm like, I'm like, I'll tell you what you need to do is buckle up, okay? Because yeah. we're about to go on a faith drive, okay? It ends but up being I'm great, just, though. you know, whether walking, driving, whatever, I mean, it's amazing how many times, you know, you have a meaningful prayer or you end up at a beautiful spot or you end up somewhere and it's like I'm looking at somebody that I haven't seen in years and I'm like, hey, how are you doing? And they're like, Pastor Jeff, how'd you get here? And I'm like, I found you in the spirit. So, and I'm like, it means God loves you and I love you too. And they're like, don't say that again. And, the, and I'm like, come back to church. Okay. And so, you know, it's, it's just beautiful. You know, you don't know where you're going to end up. 
Who you're going to encourage? <laughs> Sometimes I freak people out. I'm like, I saw you. They're like, how'd you see me where? I'm like, I saw you under a fig tree. For sure. Jeff sees people under the fig tree. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways. So, but I'm just encouraging. I told, what's funny is I told, I, I talked to Miss, Miss Stringer um, at, in Japan about faith walks. And she's like, I think I'm going on a faith walk. And she just left and started walking in Japan. She's like, okay, that was wonderful. I'm going to keep doing that more often. And so we, it was beautiful. And now, now brother Doug, Doug uh, jokes about it with me that he's going on. He's like, I'm doing the Jeff Needham thing. I'm just flowing. I'm like, <laughs> praise God. Uh, anyway, so I'm just, it's simple. It just including God in normal activities and trusting him and listening to him. Not because you're worried about like, oh, he, you know, displeasing him with whatever. It's because you just love him that much. You want to walk with him. You, you, you know, you can go on a walk with God. You can go on a vacation with God. That's right. You can go on a mission trip with God. For sure. You can work with God. For sure. He can be involved in all of it. It's just the leaning in of your heart. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. I think that's Why don't pretty you good. bless them and wrap them up? Yes. Amen. Lord, you um, are so kind and you are so faithful. And as much as uh, we let you, I know you want to be involved in yes. any and everything. And so, Lord, would you remind us, Holy Spirit, would you remind us when we find ourselves wonder, wondering or wandering, when we find ourselves uh, feeling uneasy or without peace, Holy Spirit, would you begin to direct our hearts? And Lord, I thank you that you are just thank covering. You. You're covering big thank decisions. You. You're covering small decisions and that we can walk very firmly. We can walk very boldly. We can walk very confidently, uh, just like the Israelites did. <laughs> and even to the point that others saw, others na other nations knew, oh, yes. Israel's God. <laughs> Israel's God told them that this is their territory, so we stand in fear. I thank you, Jesus, that those around us begin to see your hand on our lives, that they begin to see you as God, yes. that their faces will begin to turn to you, the one. And so I thank you, Jesus, that peace is a part of the program. Yes. Peace is a part of the program. Shom bronde es satande. Even now, <laughs> even now, I ask, Lord, that you begin to drop things in hearts right now that will lend to peace. Just for a second, if you have anything, any small thing, any big thing, just go ahead and take a moment. Let's give it to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus, Thank you, that you're so faithful. Thank you are so kind. You are so generous. You give very generously. That you fill up. <laughs> that you fill cups up. Overflowing. Oh, that we don't just have to get by. If you want to put your hands out, you're welcome to do that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you're faithful. You are the faithful one, and we put our confidence in you. We put our confidence in you. Oh, and we stand in faith in you. Even for the things that we don't know about yet. <laughs> so I thank you for a holy sending. Ascending forth that only you can do. Thank you, Jesus, that you lead us. You guide us. You lead us beside still waters. Oh, even in shadows, we don't have to fear <laughs> because you are there. And we stand in faith that you are beside us, <laughs> that you never leave us and you never forsake us. And I speak against the lie that, that uh, you have left. I speak against the lie that, that we or, or someone is out there on their own. 
that they're doing it on their own, that they have to figure it out. Oh, Lord, because you are so faithful. You are so faithful. They don't have to figure it out. <laughs> oh, you guide them. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and I just hear the scripture that it is his goodness that leads us to repentance. Oh, and how um, Peter responded in repentance uh, when he saw the Lord's hand. And so if there's anything you've been doing on your own, if there's anything you've been using your own strength for, anything you're just running, marching uh, ahead, even according to last orders, um, if you want to uh, just repent to the Lord, Lord, we repent if we've just been running. We repent if we've been trying to do it as if we don't have a God, <laughs> as if we don't have a king. We repent for, for wandering. We repent for just continuing uh, without you in mind, without you, the faithful one, the faithful guide, the faithful shepherd. We repent for acting like we're sheep without a shepherd. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Awesome. I actually saw Kurt coming up and blessing us real quick, and then we'll be dismissed. Um, the Lord's been really kind of stirring my heart in Romans 8, and I just, you know, kind of like, you know, Pastor Jeff and Pastor Elizabeth are such awesome encouragers. They just encourage you. They just pray and intercede for you uh, regularly. They just encourage you. They just love you. What a great model. And, and I just know sometimes there are some tough things going on in our lives. And, you know, Paul talks about, I consider that our pre present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And later on he says, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love, is, love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And Lord, I just ask you to bless my brothers and sisters today in, in you, Lord, that they know, that they know, that they know, that they know how, how much they are truly loved by you, how special they are. They were created uniquely for your pleasure, O oh Lord. Allow them to know that, that sometimes in life there are, there are obstacles and there are things that the evil one puts in our way, Father, but know that he is a defeated foe, Jesus, and that allow them to know, Father, that they are, they are heirs in, as royalty, Father, in heaven, and that heaven rejoices when they turn to, to you, Jesus, that you can solve any problem. You are in the midst of any issue. You are there picking them up and dusting them off and going, Hey, you know, I see that you fell, but I got you. Allow them to be encouraged and know how truly they are loved by all of everybody here in this church, but also, Father, to know how much truly they are loved by you. Encourage them. Let them know that their hope and trust is in you. Give them peace, the peace that comes from heaven, Father, to know that you've got this all taken care of. Lord, we just love you. We know that you are, you are our hope. You are everything to us. And we rejoice to know the great sacrifice that you did for us and know that your blood covers everything. And that through your death and through the resurrection, we have life, Father, and allow our life, Father, just to be a reflection of you, Lord. And allow my brothers and sisters, as they go to Bulgaria and change the world to know that 
that you are pleased, Lord, in the impact that they can touch the hearts of people that will allow them to see you more clearly. And that's what life is, Father. Our life is in servant, servitude to you and to humanity, Father, so that everyone can know that the immense love that you have for, for us and allow our my brothers and sisters in Christ to know how truly, truly, truly loved they are and that they are conquerors in all things through you, Christ. And we just praise you, bless them, Bless them on their travels and bless them as they walk in your path, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord.